Unlike skateboarding or BMX that had some gains over the years but saw no true established franchise until Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, snowboarding games on the other hand were so mass produced that it whitewashed the entire industry. Just look at all of these games man, you'll feel like you're going blind before you can even stand a chance at playing all of these. Cool Boarders, Snowboard Kids, 1080, Amped, SSX, Twisted Edge, Big Mountain, Dark Summit, and now, brought to you by Activision, we have Sean Palmer's Pro Snowboarder. For the brand built on Big Air Extreme Sports, it makes perfect sense to launch this as one of the premier games to represent O2. But this game may as well have been launched off the top of a goddamn mountain because it never stood a chance against the army of pre-established snowboarding franchises standing in its way. And for what? A tiny slice of the profit pie? Sean Palmer's Pro Snowboarder was developed by Deersoft, who if you're unfamiliar, are best known for their work on Sean Palmer's Pro Snowboarder, which is always a good sign. The game released in late 2001. Now, hold up a minute. We had Matt Hoffman in May of 2001, Pro Skater 3 on October 28th, and now Sean Palmer on November 13th? Are you fucking insane, Activision? What kid can afford two brand new full-priced games within two weeks of each other? Especially when the first of those is Pro Skater 3, arguably the best sequel to your biggest franchise at the time. But look, I'm not even worried about that, because just look at how many of these fucking snowboarding games released within that same window. You've got SSX Tricky, which is another amazing sequel dropping the week in between Pro Skater 3 and Sean Palmer, Dark Summit the day before, and then Amped a week later, which would go on to spawn a new franchise of its own. This game was fucking doomed by no exaggeration of the word. I don't think I've ever seen such a gang-bitched shit of a release window in my entire life. But if all of those other series thrived in competition and continued for years afterwards, while Sean Palmer's Pro Snowboarder quickly faded into obscurity, then what chance does this game have of being any good? Ugh, I think I need to start wearing diapers because I'm about ready to shit myself. The hyped up intro on this game actually begins with this Californication looking FMV sequence before transitioning into the standard montage of pro footage. I know who Sean White is, but that's about it. What did you expect? The closest thing I've ever done to snowboarding is play Tony Hawk Shred, and you all know how well that went. But hey, that doesn't matter because we actually get to create our own character this time. There, it looks just like me. Seriously though, this is one of the saddest, most pointless character creation modes I've ever seen. All you get is a few basic options with a very limited selection of pre-made outfits and colour combinations and apparently black people don't snowboard because there is only one option for a different skin tone here and that's not okay. Jesus, this is a mess. Let's just forget all of that junk and jump into the game already. Now, I should mention that I do have a bit of nostalgia going into this one. Sometimes I would pop in Pro Skater 3 just to play the demo of this game and loop the Aspen level over and over again, so it's nice finally getting to explore some new courses. I mean, obviously we're not going to get the variety here found in other games given they're all downhill frozen wonderlands, but we do get the likes of ski courses, more traditional competition spaces, thick woodland areas shrouded in fog and snowstorms, and the big drops. Damn, these are so much fun. 
These are some impressively large levels too. However, the problem I find with such expansive maps is that it can be difficult and even frustrating at times trying to find your objective while the paths constantly split down each mountain. Other times you'll find areas littered with stuff that make certain spaces far too crowded to navigate. But the good news is that everything does flow incredibly well. When you hit the bottom of the level, your run is over, but you'll often find vehicles marked with a red circle. Hit these and they'll take you back up the mountain so you can continue your run. Very smart move, and to hit the longest combo lines for high scores, this encourages you to learn the layout of each area so you can streamline your sessions. Nothing is more satisfying than scoring some massive numbers carving through the snow while Spine Shank's new disease is playing in the background. The soundtrack on this game is decent, but it just doesn't offer enough variety. We usually see a mix of punk, hip-hop and rock songs, but here, it's all just big blasting tracks that doesn't take long to all blend in together into a nice pasty mush for your ears. This is where it ends for me, because as fun as this game can be at times, there is no denying that it's fundamentally a real pain in the ass. When it comes to any snowboarding game, the big thing I personally tend to struggle with is control. Getting good at doing moves has a sharp learning curve, and the pure nature of the sport lends itself to sluggish control moving through snow. I do like that anyone can pick up a controller, jump in here and perform moves like in Pro Skater, but when you're required to hit such a specific set of obstacles halfway down a mountain within a time limit, it quickly becomes such a torturous process because you can't just simply turn around and try again because gravity exists. Downhill courses, as fun as they can be, always tend to stand out for being a problem, but at least in Tony Hawk, you still have the option to turn around and go back up the hill most of the time. Here, even on a flat surface, it's like there is a black hole at the bottom of the map constantly dragging you down. I mean, look at this! It's a flat room! I miss this object the first time, and all I want to do is just go backwards a little bit, just so I can get another shot at hitting this thing, but look at this game having a fucking stroke about it! Oh, I finally got it. See, that's the thing. Most snowboarding games you'll see focus a lot more on races, slalom runs and scoring, and there is a reason for that. Because the core structure and restrictive movement just cannot work for this objective-based gameplay. Even trying to do special moves is unreliable, and I can only hit them half of the time if I'm lucky. But a large amount of the goals require you to do this thing called bonking, and this is just a nightmare. I do not understand what I'm doing wrong here, but I can never get it to work. You're supposed to jump onto an object and press the button to bonk it. Now, this could very well be a me issue. I'm fully aware of that. The controls of this game don't translate from text very well at all in my opinion, and I have fluked this move a couple of times. But the thing is, if I still haven't learned how to do this necessary move that is absolutely required to beat this game by naturally playing through all eight levels across hours of playtime, then I'm left scratching my head wondering why they made it such an impossibly specific manoeuvre instead of just a simple grind or something else. But even if I did understand how to do this, trying to land on an object smaller than your shriveled frostbitten balls is next to impossible. And at the end of the day, why was this the core function in completing so many objectives? There is no variety here. No objectives that feel unique to any level, no contests or different events like the half pipe or big jump, no racing, nothing whatsoever to break up the experience. Nope, just eight levels that are all exactly the fucking same. Score points, collect the logos, smash something, sprint to the bottom, and bonk everything in sight. Or try to anyway. I do more boinking and bouncing off of shit in my runs. This useless 
bum can't even bonk the giant gondola because he goes through the fucking thing. And with nothing to help break this up, it's a chore to get through this game. Thankfully, the final level is more like a playground with lots of huge airs and amazing combo lines from top to bottom that all naturally flow into each other. And that's the thing, when you're just free riding down, busting tricks and exploring the different areas, this game can offer up a lot of enjoyment, and it's made even better with a second player in this cool push mode where you have to battle over screen real estate by being the better player. But it's all of these tedious and restrictive objectives that bring this down and damage the overall experience, killing this game for me. 9 out of 10 highly recommended? My fucking ass. Sean Palmer's Pro Snowboarder gets 4 out of 10. Plagued by gravity, what else can I really say about it? It's got the pick up and play control scheme down better than a lot of other snowboarding games in my opinion, but it didn't even come close to capturing the same level of quality or charming character of its competition. Now, as we all know, it wouldn't be a mass-marketed Activision franchise without some portable spin-offs. So, let's take one last ride down the slopes of the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance ports. I never thought I'd see the day when a Game Boy Color would attempt to replicate the hyped up intro montage the console games are so well known for. I mean, don't get me wrong, it looks like total shit, but I am still very impressed. That detail aside, however, this port is about as bare bones as you'll ever see. Graphics and presentation wise, it actually looks really good and has some lively music which is always appreciated, but it's just not fun to play. This odd perspective combined with the blistering speeds makes depth perception and general visibility very difficult. Again, this comes back to the entire downhill dilemma. An isometric viewpoint for the Pro Skater handhelds works fine because you can simply turn around and try again at whatever you're doing. But here, you only get one shot at it in an entire run. I can't even complete any of the objectives within the first level, and I'm trying my best. Something this game does get right though is offering some alternate play modes. Palmer X is a race down the mountain as quickly as possible, a mode that works so much better given there is no pressure to perform anything too dramatically complicated. And look, almost the entire roster of characters race at once. There is only four in the entire game, so it's not much of an accomplishment though. The other event is the Super Pipe, and yeah, this is super shit. It's got this weird fake 3D thing going on that doesn't help, but momentum is so busted which makes performing tricks a frustrating mess. With only four levels overall, what you see is what you get here, and I don't want to waste my time playing it any longer. It's mediocre even by the standards of this system, but in the grand scheme of everything, yuck, two out of 10. Of course, the Game Boy Advance version is superior, with many obvious improvements that I don't even need to mention. No attempt at the intro montage though, so I guess they put their efforts into the more important areas. You think? No. With clearer graphics, more detailed course layouts, and the additional buttons making it easier to string trick combos together, this is a lot easier to get into and actually play. But this angle of attack down the mountain is still so awkward. There is no seeing what's coming at you in the level, so trying to do things like pick up letters and do tricks off of specific gaps is completely unachievable. Why were these not 2D side-scrollers? Kind of like Pro Skater 2 on the Game Boy Color. Or how about that one skiing level from the color version of Croc Legend of the Gobbos? Yeah, give me more of that shit. At least you could actually see where you were going. This game also has the racing and the super pipe mode, which has seen some improvements in the GBA version, but everything else is the same. Still only four characters and only four levels. That's a joke. And what the fuck is this? Why did they make one level entirely yellow? It's like someone pissed in the snow. 
Yeah, up and down the entire fucking mountain. Could you imagine having that much piss? Well, that's certainly a great analogy for how pissed I am playing this shovelware trash. Sean Palmer's Pro Snowboarder on Game Boy Advance gets 3 out of 10. Here's a crazy idea. How about you put some effort into these games, like how Vicarious Visions treated the Pro Skater ports with love and care? I know it was significantly more important for that franchise to meet a certain level of quality, given the abundance of sequels and cashing in on its success, but if the Activision O2 series is not important enough to receive that same level of care, then don't even bother making them! And they didn't. For some reason, a sequel to Sean Palmer was supposedly in the works and a trailer for the game does exist, but I imagine that project was swiftly cancelled once they realised how terrible the first game was that nobody in their right mind would want more of this shit. In fact, the only Activision O2 game to even get a sequel was Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX. And that's probably because the sequel was already in development before the first game even released. So be sure to join me tomorrow when we take a look. But until then, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and remember to share Hawktober with your friends and on social media. I'm Square Eye Jack, and I hope you have a great fucking day. Thanks for watching.